Okay, so to begin with, we used a series of eye level close up shots short scenes that introduce a character and his emotions. The eye level angle created a close and personal effect from the audience to the character. In this way, the audience can begin to imply that the character shown is the protagonist and not the antagonist, as they can relate to him. The short close up scenes allowed for an intensification of the emotions, such as curiosity, suspense, and tension. As for the miss on scene, we chose to use dim key lighting so the character could be seen, but you could also tell that it was nighttime. We mixed a diegetic and non diegetic sound, and we did this to intensify some sounds for different emotional effects. For the diegetic sound, we used parallel sound heavy breathing, the phone rattling, and the shuffling for coins. This had the audience feel the intensity, the intensity and urgency of the moment. The non diegetic creepy music and wolf howling created a gloomy, dark feeling of the setting. For the coins, we used a close-up so the action was clear and we avoided confusion. For this chasing, we used a medium angle with tracking camera movement. I believe this mix was unsuccessful in transmitting the effect of danger and nerve wreckingness we seeked. This is because the tracking was going at the same speed as the running, so it seemed as though the running was in slow motion. However, these stable long shot scenes were very good as it was very clear what was going on and created enough excitement to intrigue the audience but not lose the sense of danger. The diegetic hit noise cleared up that a punch happened since the lighting is not the best. This following medium shot is great. It has a slight low angle which makes the chaser look dangerous and superior with the key lighting on him. It also serves as a pause for the movie as he's been very action packed and fast paced. Now we have a close-up of a hand from a point of view angle, which emphasizes the rage of the character and shows some of the setting. Now we go back to the same medium shot, which makes it feel continuous. This frame plus the tracking gets us right back into the action from the pause. Now we cut back to the other character. The long shot introduces us to what he's up to. A quick close-up of his face shows that he has seen something, which is then introduced in the next long shot, the setting, the house. The running retouches some of those feelings of urgency and fear. Now, the following long shots are essential so that the audience feels orientated of the space. That is why we use plenty of them with some tracking camera movement. Very few. Uh, now, let me talk about this. Okay, so this following medium shot of the wall is very creative and it's very successful in the use of backlighting which shows the shadow. Now, it indirectly shows what the action is going on, but doesn't directly show it, which gives that sense of mystery and confusion and what's going on. Now we cut back to the other character, the chaser, with this long shot and some tracking inwards into the scene. Now, this is very important that you look at the action, the miss on scene. The chaser does exactly the same thing as the character being chased, which links these two characters and starts creating that sense of why are they linked until this shadow spot which is exactly the same except for the hand. Uh, we used a low angle so we're actually looking up at the chaser which again makes him feel powerful, more dangerous. Um, the next few scenes it's very important to edit. We only had one camera so we shot different action sequences multiple times but if you can see it looks very continuous moving from one medium shot to the other the action flows. Again in this bathroom scene we, we used that low angle uh, we talked about to, look, to make him feel superior. We move with him to see again the whole space and with some panning we're able to move through the whole bathroom without being seen by the mirror. Now we use a following long shots as we cut back to the other character and some tracking to really introduce what, what the character is doing, the action, and some of the setting. This uh, close-up of the feet is a shock and in some ways startles us to remind us that what's going on that we're in a chase scene. Now uh, as the character hides, we cut back to the other character and we don't show him going through the entire house because we already showed that with the other character. So we can just cut back to this other part of the house and move on from there. Now. All these scenes are building up to something as the characters are beginning to unite because they were separate. Uh, this creates excitement in the characters. This long shot introduces that the, that the characters are going to meet as they are very close now. And then we have a point of view angle uh, with the diegetic parallel heavy breathing that uh, gives that sense of fear. Uh, it also connects us to the character inside the, the, the one is hiding. The fight scene is what was being built up to. Um, in a fight scene, it is crucial the use of sound. So here we use a lot of diegetic uh, foley sounds of punches and some tracking camera movement so we can see all of the action, right? Here we see a long shot of them fighting, pulling on the head, and then again, the sound and the quick shots that move on from the special effects to the real thing.
what was the purpose of the short scenes and the diegetic sound and all the acting of the mise-en scenes? Well, half of this movie is acting, so what we wanted was for all that uh, building up of the suspense to really uh, pay off in a, a lot of excitement, a lot of action with the head being banged into the wall and the bottle being crashed into the head. We really wanted the audience to want to know more, to be intrigued to what was coming next. So, um, okay, so we have this action and then these close-up shots of the, of the main character to show really his emotions. He's feeling really upset, confused, outraged. So in this part of the movie, we introduce the third character. To do this, we begin with an extreme long shot of the car coming in with some panning movement to match to where the car is going. And oh, this is how we introduce Get the next character car. with a very long shot. Right, she gets out, we understand what the action is going on. We want the audience to feel bad for her, she's just been abandoned, left there by her whatever. And then we use close-ups of her to really show her emotions of uh, confusion, being afraid, being startled. And then we use this high angle to show how she's feeling inside, really minor, really upset. We also use some craning camera movement, and here we're gonna cut back to the other character and we really want to emphasize the idea that this character is dead because we're gonna plot twist it at the end. We, re we again use medium shots to emphasize on what this character is feeling and again a back shot from a medium shot shot from the back to really show where the character is going all the action. So we also used um, tracking for this for this shot. The camera is moving slowly behind the character matching about the speed at which he's moving uh, he's moving slowly, as you can see, because we're trying to show that the character is very exhausted. He's uh, trying to just soak in everything that just happened. Hence uh, the drink, but also the drink will come in handy later. So you can also notice that we keep it at a slight eye level angle because we don't want this character to be seen as the bad guy, right? Although he killed someone, we don't want him to see, be seen as a bad guy, but as someone who just got thrown into this whole scenario and tried to play it as best as he could. Right, that's why we keep it at eye level, so the audience can relate to him. The audience will think, I'm, I'm not a bad person, and since I'm, I'm similar to this character, this character isn't a bad person either. So this is another part of the film where I think we, did not, we didn't do a good job. So practically, we really wanted to emphasize on the bottle, where the bottle is placed after he drinks it, because it's the exact same spot where he picks up the, the other bottle to smash it against the, the chaser's head to kill him, to kill him, right? So we didn't, the audience didn't catch on to this and I think we could have done a better job at this if we had put more screen time on the bottle, maybe have a more close-up shot of the bottle, maybe stay more more time on it, but right here it's just really like a, a medium shot transitioning into another medium shot that just shows too much wall. I think the audience didn't really grab on to, to this, this moment the way we wanted. I mean, we attempt to do it, as you can tell, because he's placed it in a very specific spot, right? Okay, now we move on to, to another shot where this perspective is changed. This time, we see it from inside the, inside the fridge. Now, we really use key lighting on this. We place a bunch of flashlights inside the fridge, so you could really concentrate on, on the character's face, right? We wanted the audience to feel a bit like... Um, anxious and like confused because now they're starting to see that the the protagonist is maybe turning into the antagonist and you can you can even see this as the camera is slightly at a low angle starting to look up at the character the same way it did with the the chaser all right so if we move on we actually uh, transition to a really close up of the bottle but now close up of his face really showing the anger and then the murmuring, and then the hitting of the door. It just shows all these characteristics of that we haven't seen before of this character, right? Even, even his speech. The tracking follows him as as the character as the audience begins. The audience begins to feel so like confused and even feel bad for this character because they know they want he wasn't like this before. So right now we have some diegetic parallel sound. This is the reason the girl starts looking to the right. A close-up to what she's looking, so we're uh, building up to the next scene, which is what she's gonna see. So we actually do this with an over-the-shoulder shot, back to a close-up, and this is an over-the-shoulder over shot that shows in the distance the action that what she's seeing. So what we want the characters to see is start feeling like this girl is is caught up in something that she's not supposed to be caught into, and.
and start feeling bad for this girl because they don't want her to be involved with this whole thing. Close up of what was going on. This is a really important shot. It's a close up to know that the character isn't really help. Dead. Then a long shot to show what she was, what the character was seeing. You. And uh, then here a diegetic sound parallel to what we're supposed to hear to affirm that he is already dead. No one can know. No one can know. A close up shot that transitions into a panning of the camera movements. So we see all the action. So we start feeling really like this character is turning into the bad guy. Now he has to go kill this person. And we start seeing this repetition from the beginning of the of the movie. Here we see a long shot that's giving us this introduction back to like what happened at the beginning of the movie. And we really see how how the audience is beginning to realize this character is not a good character. And start seeing that the whole movie is a loop.